Number one says this prism has a right triangle for a base. What is the volume of the prism? So volume formula for a prism is that volume equals the area of the base times the height. And so the base in this case is the right triangle. So we'll need to find the area of that. And then the height is going to be the segment that connects the bases. So from here to here. So our height we can see right away is eight. So let's go ahead and find the area of the triangle. And in order to do that, we're gonna need to figure out this segment here. So we have a right triangle, it said. So we're gonna have five squared equals four squared plus x squared. So we'll just do the Pythagorean theorem. So this will be 25 equals 16 plus x squared. Subtract 16 from both sides and we'll get nine equals x squared. So that base equals three. So then we'll go ahead and find the area of that in order to determine what our um, big B is or our area of our base. So area of a triangle is the base of the triangle times the height of the triangle divided by two. So let me just highlight that on here. So we've got the base of the triangle. I guess that's not very bold. Okay, so the base of the triangle times the height of the triangle, so three times four, and then divided by two. So that's 12 divided by two. So big B um, equals six. So then we'll plug that into the volume formula. So the volume is gonna equal the area of the base times the height, area of the base being six, and the height being eight. So our volume here is gonna be 48. Um, units cubed. Number two has us with an oblique cylinder, meaning that it's just slanted, that the side length isn't the height. Um, and so this has a radius of two. So the radius for this base right here is two. Um, the top of the cylinder can be obtained by translating the base by the directed line segment AB, which has a length of six square root two units. And then the segment forms a 45 degree um, angle with the plane of the base. So this um, side right here forms a... 45 degree angle with the ground here, kind of. So this angle here is 45. All right, so then um, it wants us to find the volume of the cylinder. So remember that volume is still equal to area of the base times the height. But in this case, our height is um, just not the side length. So our height is actually right here. Whoops, thought I had a segment on there okay so the height is actually this so this is what we are going to um need to find and um so now for a 45 45 90 triangle because we know this makes a 90 degree angle when we have the hypotenuse we just take that and divide by square root of two to get the leg length so that leg length is just going to equal the hypotenuse divided by the square root of two. So that height is going to be six. So then we just need to find um, the area of the base. And so the area of our base, this is a circle. So our area of our base is going to be equal to pi times the radius squared. And our radius in this case is two. And two squared is four. So our base area is going to be 4 pi. So then when we go to find our volume, we'll do area of the base times the height. So the area of the base is 4 pi and the height is 6. So the volume here is going to be equal to 24 pi um, units cubed. And then you could um, certainly multiply that out um, if you would like. 
All right, number um, three here says a prism has a height of five inches and a volume of 80 cubic inches. Select all figures that could um, be the base. So again, a prism is volume equals area of the base times the height. So if they're giving you that the volume is 80 and the height is five, we could divide by five here and get that um, our base area is 80 divided by five or 16. So as long as our base area is 16, we'll be good. So a square has a side length of four. So the area of that is gonna be four times four, which is 16. So that would be our base area. So that one's gonna be good. A rectangle that has um, side lengths of two and eight. So to find the area here, you would do two times eight, which is 16, so that's good. A circle with a radius of two inches, so that's gonna be equal to pi times two squared. So four pi, which is not gonna be equal to 16. A right triangle with legs of four inches. So in a triangle, you do base times height, so four times four, but then you divide by two. So that's 16 divided by two, so that one's not gonna be good. And then the last one is a heart-shaped base where they tell us the area of the base is 16 and that would be good. All right, then number four says this water bottle has a base um, with an area of B inches squared and a height of H. Tyler thinks the volume of the water bottle is B times H. Elena thinks that it's going to be less than B times H. Um, do you agree with either of them? So we know that the formula for the area of a cylinder is certainly B times H. So we would take the base area, which they told us is B, and then multiply it by the height of the cylinder. And so in this case, um, in this case, if we did that, that looks like it would be larger than the actual um, volume of the cylinder since we've got these kind of pieces that cut in here. So if the cylinder just went straight up to the top, then we kind of have all this stuff that wouldn't be volume of the water bottle. Um, so I would say that I agree with Elena um, because of the um, indents at the top of the water bottle. Number five, this solid has curved sides. All cross sections are parallel to the base um, and they are squares measuring three units on each side. The height from the top to the bottom is 10 units. So the height here is going to be 10. And then this asks us to um, find the volume. So this is going to be 10 units. So find the volume. So we would do the area of the base times the height since this is a prism. So the area of the base is gonna be three times three, which is nine. So then for volume, we'll do area of the base times the height, so 10 times nine, which is 90. Number six, each small square represents one square centimeter. Sketch and label a solid formed by rotating this two-dimensional shape around the horizontal axis shown, and then find the volume. So when we rotate, we're again going to get um, kind of circular patterns here, and they're going to be the same um, kind of distance from this horizontal axis as the original. So we're going to get this kind of circle that has um, a, and let me make this a little bit wider. So this circle is going to be about that big, and then we're also going to have another one in here um, that has a radius of two. So this larger one, um, kind of just the disc part is two and then it's two inside of here. And then it'll just keep going, um, to the end. So this will, let me just grab these and duplicate them. So this will happen on the top and the bottom and then this as well. 
And so then this gives us kind of our two-dimensional shape. And we know that the radius here would be two. And we also know that the distance here would be two. And then we can count this and we see three. So then this length here would be three. Oops, why did I write four? Um, this little part, this little part is two. All the way in from the edge to the center would be four, but just kind of the width of this disc part of this solid part would be two. So now this wants us to find the volume of that solid. So we've kind of got two things going on here. We've got this kind of bigger cylinder and then we've got the cutout. Okay, so we're going to need to find the area of the large cylinder and then subtract off this smaller one. So this larger one, okay, we, I just kind of said has a radius of four all the way into the middle. So when you're thinking about this whole thing, that's four. And then this width was three. So when we go to find the volume of this. We have area of the base times the height. The base is a circle, so that's going to be 4 squared times pi. And then the height connects the two bases, so that's 3. So this is going to be 16 pi times 3, which is 48 pi for that. Then we're going to need to subtract off that hole created. So we're going to have to subtract off this cylinder, okay, because this is empty throughout the whole shape. So we're going to subtract that. So the radius of this is 2, and again, this height is 3. So we still have area of the base times the height. Now we have 2 squared times pi for the base, and then the height is 3. So this is 4 pi times 3, which is going to give us a volume of 12 pi. And then we will um, subtract these. So 48 pi minus 12 pi gives us the volume of our solid as 36 pi units cubed. Number seven says a solid has a volume of six cubic units and a surface area of 22. So we've got a volume of six and a surface area of 22 square units. The solid is dilated and has a surface area of 198 units. What's the volume of the new image? So we need to figure out the scale factor. So we're gonna compare the two similar things they gave us, which was surface area. So we're gonna do the new surface area divided by the original surface area and when we compare areas, we get a k-squared value. And so if we do um, 198 divided by 22, we get 9. So 9 is equal to k-squared. And then this helps us to get our scale factor by square rooting and figuring out that our k-value is 3. So the original shape was dilated by a scale factor of 3. So now we can take our volume and multiply that by the scale factor cubed, and that will give us our new volume. So our original volume is 6, and then we're going to multiply that by 3 cubed. And when we do that, um, we will end up with a new volume of 162 um, cubic units or units cubed. So that would be our new volume. Number eight, um, this pyramid in Egypt is the world's tallest freestanding structure for more than 3,400 years. The original um, height was about 144 meters. And the base is approximately a square with each length being 231 meters. The diagram shows a cross section that has a length of 154 meters. What is the scale factor used to create the cross section? And then what is the height of the cross section? 
So in this one, they're just giving us lengths. They're not giving us areas. So when we compare new, new versus original, that's going to give us our scale factor. So when we do 154 compared to 231, this is our K value. And so 154 divided by 231 gives us a scale factor of two thirds or 0.666 repeating. So when we go to find the new height, we will take the original height and we will multiply it by the scale factor. So we'll do 144 times two thirds and that will give us a dilated height of 96 meters. Number nine, select all statements that must be true. So an angle bisector in an isosceles triangle is also the perpendicular bisector. So here's an isosceles triangle. And let's draw in an angle bisector here. And so if we have an angle bisector, then we know that this angle is congruent to this angle. They also told us it was isosceles. So we know those two sides are congruent. And then we see that this angle bisector is in both triangles, so it's congruent to itself. Then we would know that these two triangles are congruent um, by side angle side. So then that would mean that this piece is congruent to this piece. It would also mean that these two angles are equal. And together those angles total 180. So if we split them into two equal parts, that means that each of these angles is 90 degrees, meaning that that angle bisector is also the perpendicular bisector. Um, the angle bisector of any angle divides the angle into two congruent parts, that's true. The median of a triangle is also the perpendicular bisector. So let's get rid of this stuff on here. So a median takes and connects a vertex to the midpoint of the opposite side. So we'll know that these two sides are congruent since this is the midpoint. Because it's isosceles, we know that these two sides are congruent. And then this um, green median is in both triangles. So we know it's congruent to itself. So now we know that the two triangles are congruent by side, side, side which then again will force this angle to be congruent to this angle, and they still total 180. So 180 divided by two gives us 90 for each of those, and we see that it's being bisected, so this is true. Um, the median of an isosceles triangle is also the angle bisector. So now we still have the median up here, but now we're looking into a different thing um, on if it's an angle bisector. So would these two angles be congruent? And yes, because the triangles are congruent. So those two pieces are gonna be congruent to each other. So the median is also the angle bisector. Um, so the median of a triangle is also the angle bisector. So now if we don't know that the triangle is isosceles, so if we have some other type of triangle, would the median um, be the angle bisector? So this would go to um, the midpoint of the opposite side. So that median cuts to the midpoint of the opposite side. So we would know this, okay? We would also know that the blue segment is in both triangles, but we don't know anything else because now it's no longer isosceles. So we don't know if these two pieces are the same and we don't know any angles. So this would not be true on just any triangle.